Welcome to another edition of Coffee with the Goose, where we talk about things that are interesting, fascinating, and irritating. I am the Goose. Glad to have you back. We've been very busy lately, mostly talking about Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather and Keith Thurman and all the uh, the news in the, the boxing world. But we're going to step back into uh, politics, if you will, for just a few minutes. But first, before we go any further, you know it. We've got to have our caffeine. God's uh, PEDs, right? Uh, my coffee, as you know, very strong, just like my opinion. And got some creamer in there to make it sweet, just like me. Mmm, good stuff. Let's talk about China and the Philippines. China, uh, let's be honest, uh, the communist nation is or can be and has been a bully. Uh, in recent years, they have infringed on many nations' territorial rights uh, in the South China Sea. How did they do that? Well, without actually invading other countries militarily, what they do is they build small islands and then they stake uh, their, they claim that as their territory. And here's where it gets tricky. Every nation has a, uh, a, a zone 12, 12 miles out from uh, land that is theirs, uh, their territory. And uh, they own it just like they do their land. But in uh, the Philippines is, is uh, no exception. And of course, the Philippines is rich in, um, in uh, minerals and, uh, uh, you know, fishing water. Uh, and they need to protect that just like any country needs to. China, when they uh, build these new islands and take control of them, they extend their territory out 12 miles and that infringes on other nations territories you get it uh, and it's not just the philippines it's several other island uh, several other nations they've done this to they're being bullies and they can get away with it why because they're a superpower and nobody wants to go to war uh, against anybody especially uh, another superpower because you're not going to it's not going to end well uh, now uh, three years ago, 2016, in The Hague, uh, it's kind of an international court, if you will, and per forgive me while I look at my notes, the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague handed the Philippines a victory in this case, uh, saying that uh, Beijing, in China, uh, does not have the right to infringe on other nations' territory the way they've been doing. Now, uh, you would think that would be the end of the story, right? Well, no, that's not the end of the story because the Hague and International Court has no power. They're not a sovereign nation in themselves. Uh, they can't just uh, make a ruling and have the whole world say, oh, okay, well, fine, uh, you have the power, you have the authority. They don't have the authority. So it's a, it's a toothless organization, if you will. No, uh, no power. And China knows that. And uh, they said, uh, we're not going to abide by your ruling. Now, this is where the leaders of these other countries, the victims of this aggression, uh, entered the picture. And in the Philippines case, it's Rodrigo Duterte, their president, uh, a very strong figure, as you know. He doesn't back down to anybody, and he's uh, got in the face uh, uh, with words with other world leaders, including the United States, and said, back off. I don't, you don't own us. We're not your territory. I, President Duterte, serve the people of the Philippines, not you. Unfortunately, it appears, I want your opinion, this isn't my opinion, I'm just observing what's happening, that uh, strong stance has not extended to China and their uh, uh, taking over territory in the South Giant China Sea. Uh, Duterte has come out and said, yeah, go ahead, you're, you're free to fish in the uh, Philippine uh, uh, economic, uh, uh, in, in, you know, areas of influence in the, in our territory, basically, in our, um, uh, uh, the sea and within our territory. And, uh, his detractors in the Philippines are beside themselves. How can you do that? How can you appease? And I think he's used this word. How can you appease the bully China? Now, when I say appease or appeasement, what do you think? If you're a history, buff like me you think neville chamberlain in great britain in the years leading up to world war ii he appeased adolf hitler in nazi germany they just let him you know how it goes you give him an inch they take a mile when it's a bully like nazi germany or communist china and you just let them do what they want to do 
they're not going to, uh, you know, play nice with you and say, oh gosh, sorry, we infringed on your territory. That's not what they do. They just take and they keep taking more and more until, uh, you know, they're stopped by force, unfortunately. So anyhow, uh, Rodrigo Duterte is, uh, you know, he, he calls China his ally and good for him. He wants to, uh, he wants things to be smooth economically and uh, uh, militarily and, you know, uh, diplomatically. Uh, and, of course, we all want to get along. We don't want war. And uh, it, the Philippines' greatest ally, which is the United States, doesn't want any part of this either. You know, China's a superpower. We don't want war with anybody. Duterte has agreed to meet with his counterpart, the Chinese leader, uh, at the end of, uh, towards the end of August. We'll see what happens. I think the um, the pushback within the Philippines has kind of gotten under his skin. It's gotten to him and he knows he's got to, he's got to make a stand eventually. How? We don't know. He says China has, uh, since this ruling uh, was handed down three years ago, he says China has uh, made um, uh, pledges of a billion dollars or more in economic aid and economic uh, opportunity for the Philippines, but it hasn't happened. They've uh, they've gone back on that that pledge, uh, and so it's it's a it's a win win for China. They're doing whatever they want to do, and it's a lose lose for the Philippines and their economy and their their sovereignty. You have to defend your nation, your borders, your uh, uh, you know, and your borders extend, like I said, out twelve miles from land. You have no matter who you are. We're seeing a big ruckus in the United States uh, over the last year or two. The Democratic Party says, ah, oh, come on in. Uh, borders out. Borders, that's old fashioned. It's not old fashioned. You don't have a country without a border. And unfortunately, you have to stand up and um, you have to push back. Uh, again, we don't want to see war, but you, uh, you keep taking and taking, taking, uh, taking like China does. Well, the Philippines has to keep giving, giving, and giving, and it's uh, to their detriment. So we'll see how Rodrigo Duterte uh, acts and uh, deals with the Chinese uh, towards the end of August. Um, he needs to step up. You know, uh, he's immensely popular in the Philippines, uh, more than 80% approval rating. They love him. He's done a lot of good things. He's made the place safe. Uh, it's safe to walk the streets with his war on, on drugs and drug dealers. But you know what? Uh, there's more to it than just, uh, you know, law and order in the streets. You have to not just defend your people against the bad guys within your borders. You have to defend your people from the bad guys out there. And in this case, it's communist China. Um, they're not going to give. You have to stand up and defend yourself in your country. So we'll see what happens. I love to hear your opinion on this. I know it's kind of a thorny issue, but... Uh, you know, it's the, I give you the facts and let you uh, give your opinion. I want to hear what you have to say. That's it for this edition of Coffee with the Goose. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll stay on top of this story. Uh, many, many thanks for watching and many, many thanks for all you folks who subscribe. The number keeps growing. Many, many thanks. We're, uh, we're indebted to you. Stick with us. We've got more shows to come. You take care.